In this question, we have a given hexagonal based permit with a given front view and a, a top view, as well as the cutting plane AA, which is at a 30 degree angle and 15 millimeters up from the base. I've got a hexagon with four sides of 40 millimeters and with a height of 80 for the question, if you want to redraw it. And then I'm going to go and complete a sectional top view as well as a sectional right view on this side as I'm drawing in first angle orthographic. And as normal, we're going to go and start by numbering our drawing in the view where we can see the true shape of what we're working with, which of course is our top view here. I'm going to use numbers for the base points. And I'm going to label the apex or the center point of the pyramid as B. And then I've got to transfer that numbering from my top view into my front view. So if I just follow my points, that of course is going to be 4. If you're looking from your front view from this direction, then you'll see 5 first and then 3. So this must be labeled as 5 comma 3. Here you're going to see 6 first and then 2. So you must label this as 6 comma 2. And then of course following that up is just 1. And then B of course the apex, the top point of my pyramid which I will go and label up there. Okay, now I have to go and follow each of my cutting points that I have here straight down into my top view. That should be quite nice and easy to do. So I'm just going to go and take each cutting point. Okay, the cutting point of course is formed wherever your cutting line, my line AA over here, cuts into or hits into a line of my solid shape. So I've got a cutting point there, 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 and there. So I'm going to take each of those cutting points and I'm going to project them straight down into my top view. Okay, now I'm going to carefully follow the numbering that I've now put in and go and make sure that I mark off my cutting points in the correct place in my top view. So here I can see this cutting point over here, it cuts into line labeled B1. So now I have to follow it down until I can see that it hits the same line in the top view, which of course is there, since that is labeled B1. Okay, I can mark that as my first cutting point. The next one cuts on line B6 and line B2. Okay, it actually has two lines that it cuts into over there, not just one. Cuts line B6 and B2. So if I follow that point down, it hits into line B2 over there. There's B2. And then it hits into line B6 over here. There's B6. The next one. That cutting point over there cuts into line B5 and line B3. So if I bring that down, it hits into B3 over there. And it hits into B5 over there. And the last one hits into line B4. So if I bring that down, there's B4. Okay, so I can mark that point on B4. And the last thing I have to do there now is go and join up each of those points. And I can do them in order. So I'm going to join the one that goes from B1 onto B2. And then from B2 onto B3. From B3 to B4. From B4 to B5. From the one on B5 to B6. And then the last one back to B1. And then I need to go and hatch my cutting plane at a 45 degree angle. Because it's quite a big cutting plane, I'm going to leave quite big gaps between each of my cutting, each of my hatching lines. It mustn't go bigger than about seven millimeters in between them but also don't draw them too close together especially when you're hatching such a big cutting plane otherwise you're going to waste 
a lot of your time simply putting in hatching lines. You've got to try and keep them same distance apart. Okay, and there we go. Now that we've gone and completed our hatching lines, we have to go and draw in the lines which are still left. Okay, because of course the part that's been cut off. Okay, in our front view here, you can clearly see that the part there underneath my set square, that's what's been cut off. So everything at the bottom over here is still left behind. So we have to still go and draw in all of the lines that go up at an angle from 1 to where it hits the cutting plane, from 6 and 2 to where it hits the cutting plane, 5 and 3 and 4 to where it hits the cutting plane. So all of those lines we've still got to go and draw in. So from 1 to where it hits the cutting plane, from 2 to where it hits the cutting plane, from 3 from 4, from 5, and from 6. Okay, now we have a complete sectional top view. Okay, now moving on to our sectional right view. Okay, because we're looking from the right and in first angle orthographic projection, our right view is going to be projected onto the left hand side of here. So we are going to have to go and take each of our points and we're going to project them across into our left view. And of course, whenever we do a cutting in solid geometry, it's always easiest to start by drawing our left view or right view as if it wasn't cut. So I'm going to start off by going and projecting all of that up into my right view. And I'm going to draw my right view out without cutting it first. And then I'm going to label it. And then I'll cut it. So I know that those points are going to have to be joined. One well, of these ones. Okay. It's quite a simple right view. Now I need to make sure that I put my labels in. Okay, which I'm going to do lightly. So I'm going to have a look following from my top view. Um, if I'm looking from the right, I'm going to see point 3 first there and then point 2. So that will be 3, 2 over there. Be sure that you follow your lines carefully when you're bringing them across and up to make sure that you label correctly. If you mess up your labeling, the whole thing goes wrong. Then over here, that's 4 and 1. So I'm going to see 4 first and then 1. So if I bring that across and up, that point there will be 4, 1. And then here I'm going to see 5 first and then 6 so across and up here. That corner there is 5, 6. And then of course my apex is of course there, point B. Okay, now I've got to do the same thing I did for my sectional top view. I'm going to take each of the cutting points that I have in my front view and I'm going to project them across into my right view. And then I am going to go and again go and check my labeling. Make sure that everything lines up. So this cuts B1. Project that across until I hit B1. Okay, there's B1. So I know that that's the cutting point I've got to mark. Then the next one cuts 2 again. Still the same. Still cuts 2. Cuts B6 and B2. So if I bring this across, it cuts B2 over there. And B6 cuts on this side there. This one over here also cuts two points, B5 and B3. So if I bring this across, it cuts B3 over here. And it cuts B5 over there. And then the last one cuts B4. So I've got to bring that across until it hits B4. So that's my last cutting point. Then I've just got to join those up with the dark lines because I know that of course I'm going to see my whole cutting plane in that view. I 
also know that this whole line down there is going to be dark so I'm just going to draw that in so long as well as this one okay and then of course my baseline I can draw in as well as this line over here which I know is going to be dark and now for this question as well they want all of the hidden detail so if they ask for all of the hidden detail you have to add it all in which means a hidden detail line there and then once that's complete we go and hatch again 45 degree angle and again we've got quite a big surface to hatch so we're going to leave decently big gaps between our hatching lines again not to waste time when you're doing these drawings you want to do things correctly but you also don't want to waste time with things that are going to make it that you don't get to the other questions that you need to do and inevitably lose your marks okay so now we've got our full sectional right view and a full sectional top view